All right, this is just a demo of uh, the, my Hexapod that's running on a Parallax propeller. I've, in one of my previous videos, I described this board. It's using the same board. Um, nothing's changed. Just the software, pretty much all wrapped up. Just little tiny things. And, uh, you know, start adding on extra goodies like the sensors and stuff like that. You know, I have a couple things that I have planned that I'd like to add to this to make it autonomous. It runs on a PlayStation 2 controller. And here's the, the wireless part. Uh, I took it out of the case. A uh, lot less bulky. Uh, and you need to put in this 10K resistor. Uh, I've tried to get it to work without it. Uh, it works fine without the inline resistors. Uh, the code I got for this is from the object library on Parallax's uh, website. Um, the author said to use 1K resistors. I've got it to work without that, uh, but the 10K is needed. I'll just show you some of the walking gates. Uh, I just don't want to make the video too long. Uh, start button to turn it on. Uh, basically, there's no movement yet because you have to sec select a gate first. So select and top button. Now we're going to go simple tripod gate. Um, Basically, just using the thumbsticks, you control. The right one controls uh, your walking movement, and your left one controls the height and turning, which needs to be adjusted. It's a little too, uh, uh, i got to tune it down so it's a little finer, smaller movement. Uh, you can adjust the height, and this is like your base height, so that never changes. So you can even go higher from that and lower. But it always return to that point. It's like a zero point, I guess. Uh, you could do the same. You can drop it down, and you have the same option up and down. Um, there's no safety on this. And what I mean by safety is if you exceed one of the servo limits, like 30, based on the, I gotta move this guy back in the picture. If you exceed one of the movements of the servo, like past 300, if the program generates that kind of code, the servo will shut off instead of trying to exceed that. So it's almost like a safeguard. And then all you would have to do is reset it. Start, select, turns off the bot, turns it back on, select your gate again. Now uh, your top two will flip into sort of like a, uh, you got your pitch and roll or yaw movements and your left and right. You can combine the two. See if you had a joystick where uh, our controller that had four uh, thumbsticks, you could technically do this on the fly, or even potentiometers where you could just slide it, and so you could adjust it. Like right now, I can lock this. We'll keep this like this. Basically, exit is the bottom, and it's locked, and it's going to go back into the walking pattern. So it's going to hold that tweaked position. That's still be movement. Now, to go back to zero, just go back into the mode, and it zeroes itself out. You'll be in that mode, but then you exit out of it, and you're walking again. Now, there's one more mode. It's the bottom right, top left, and it's uh, the roll and the turning. And the same thing, you can you can adjust the height, you can turn it, and you exit. That was a bad example. Let's get back into that. You can turn it and exit, and it'll keep that position. And you can walk like this. Now if you go back into that mode, I'll zero out. It's walking. Or it's going to go back into that mode. So that technically you can do this, exit, go into the other one, and put a, twist it, and even put a roll on the body. Like totally put him out of position. Exit that. And he'll walk in that position. All kind of distorted. Now, same thing, to exit out of all that, you're going to have to go into each of those previous modes. Zero is out on that one, exit, go into the other one, 
exit, you're back in walking. It's got several gates, they all have to be tweaked. You basically have to control the speed. Like this is uh, to increase speed or to decrease speed, basically slower. Uh, just hold it down a little bit and you'll see that it goes much slower. More of a realistic sort of creeping mode. Uh, your height is up and down, up and down. And to uh, just leg lift, uh, increase, decrease. Uh, increase speed, decrease speed, and then your gates are select, uh, and then all four of these are select. Hold this one and these four. It's a pretty rough demo. Um, probably better explain if it was written on paper, but once you kind of putz around with it, you gotta get the hang of it. I'll uh, show you some other of the gates. Okay, now that's an example of when the servo exceeds its limit. There's always a problem with this gate. Uh, basically, you just have to reset the robot, hit your start, select the gate, and then you just adjust your heights and your speed again. It's got ripple gates, wave gates, step gate, or the tripod gates. Um, I, just, I forgot to write that. There we go. And the same thing, you can increase the speeds on the fly. As you're moving, just hold the X button, which increases, and you can tell it's moving faster. Oh, and every time you let go of the controls, it's going to go back to a zero. So whatever previous position it ends, it always goes back to like a home position. Uh, I don't remember the gates. It's a little faster one. These, I believe, are the different types of uh, ripple gates, no, wave gates. There's the 12, the 9, and 18 step. And here's your ripple gate. Same thing, you can change direction on the fly. It doesn't have to stop or anything. <clears throat> Since these are predetermined gates, even though you change the direction, once you take your thumb off, you have to wait for the whole gate to end and then for it to cycle into the home position. Uh, pretty much, that's just a short demo. Uh, I'm going to try to make another video a little bit more detailed, but for right now, just showing that the progress and then, uh, and it's pretty fast too. Turn it off, and since the robot's off, you can turn off the controller. If you turn off the controller while the robot's on and you lose the link, your robot will go crazy. There's no way around that. Uh, and I even tried to uh, think about. It. So uh, for right now, it's just a demo, and I'm going to make a demo of the smaller one. Basically, it doesn't matter what size your robot is. As long as you change the dimensions in the software and you know the dimensions pretty well uh, of like your femur, your tibia, and uh, the, the, the coxa, then you can put any sized robot, you can put the, or you can put the controller in any sized robot.